Okay, in this video we're going to talk about introductions and conclusions. Introductions and conclusions are crucial to writing a good essay. The introduction is the first sentence of your essay and part of the first paragraph and it plays a dual role of both setting the theme or the tone of your essay and engaging your reader. So, six good ways to start an essay. Step number one, you could give a brief anecdote that starts with a sensory detail. Here's an example. The blur of blue tiles at the bottom of the pool disappeared as I, or the late afternoon sun slid through the stained glass windows, dot, dot, dot. The roller coaster screamed against the metal frame as it twisted toward me at the front of the line. Surrounded by thousands of stars, complete silence, and spectacular mountains, I stood. So you're giving them a sensory detail, something to pull them in to your story, something to get them started in and give them um, an idea of what you're talking about. You could create a scenario using sensory detail, but beginning with the word imagine. So imagine the smell of chocolate pudding bubbling on the stove, or imagine the rush of wind through your hair as you gallop. Imagine yourself as a freshman in high school, beginning your independence. Uh, a third one, you could ask a question. Why is it that the people influences most, influences in ways that are not easily quantified? Or, what would you do if you could play God for a day? That's exactly what the leaders of the tiny island nation of Guam tried to answer. Or, how do politicians buy, buy votes? The fourth one, you can start with a quote. Experience is what you receive when you don't get what you want. I remembered my father's words, dot, dot, dot. Or you can start by saying who said the quote. John F. Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Or step five, a fifth option is give a statement of truth. The peregrine falcon was brought back from the brink of extinction by the ban of DDT. Or I promised God I would eat all my peas, but he didn't care. Now doesn't this one catch your attention? Now you want to see what, um, what this person promised God that he or she would eat the peas for in return for something that God would do for him or her. High school is a strange time. After three years of trying to develop an identity and friends in middle school, students are expected to enter a new environment in which they must function with far greater maturity. You could start with an interesting statistic. Spain, though hardly a literary juggernaut, translates more books in one year than the entire Arab world has in the past 1,000 years. Some interesting fact. The average iceberg weighs over 100,000 metric tons. Now, how to not start an essay. I am going to write about, one time I went, this essay is about, I'm going to tell you about. So, those are your introductions. Now let's talk about conclusions. Your conclusion is your chance to have the last word on the subject. The conclusion allows you to have a final say on the issues that you've discussed in your paper, summarize your thoughts, demonstrate the importance of your ideas, and propel your reader to, new, to a new view on the subject. It's also your opportunity to make a final impression and to end on a positive note. Your conclusion should make your readers glad that they read your paper. Your conclusion gives your reader something to take away or will help them see things differently or appreciate your topic in a personally, personally relevant way. Uh, it can suggest broader implications that would not only in interest your reader but also enrich your reader's life in some way. It's your gift to the reader, your parting gift, the last thing you have to say. So, some ways to end your essay. You can give an opinion. A criminal, no matter his or her age, should be dealt with according to the crime. The legal system is too lenient when it comes to juvenile offenders. Laws need to be rewritten immediately so that no more hardcore criminals go free just because they're juveniles. Okay, apparently this one was about juvenile offenders, gives one last opinion. You can summarize or restate the main points in different words. As you can see, it's not important to know everything, but it is important to know how to find the answer. There will not always be a teacher nearby with the answer. You have to learn how to research, 
how to dig through the sources to find what you need to know. Or, number three, you can give a brief anecdote or scenario that illustrates the main points, like you did, like was also available in the introduction. Or you can personalize the topic by telling what it taught to you or how your life is better because of it. Or how your life has changed, maybe not for the better, but how your life has changed. Riding a roller coaster with someone who is a chicken is something I will certainly never do again. I should have listened when Sheila told me she did not want to ride it. I should have let her take the chicken exit. Next time, I will know better. Okay, you can give a statement of truth. Some statistics show that drivers under the age of 16 are more dangerous. On the other hand, some statistics show that they are no more dangerous than drivers 16 to 25. Therefore, whether drivers are under the age of 16 or more dangerous than those over 16 is still debatable. Give a solution to the problem. Many smokers struggle to quit smoking. However, they have doctors, pharmacists, and friends to support and encourage them. Or, step there are seven, close with a question that involves the reader. You can answer the question, or you can leave it for the reader to decide based on what you've written. The question must relate to the main idea. It was the worst experience of his life. Andrew decided that it was the last time he would ever go on a roller co coaster. Who can blame him?